Sir. Dropping off the edge released recently by the Jesuit Social Services and Catholic Social Services Australia is a fourth report in a series linking social disadvantage with postcode areas. Many people will be familiar with the lead author of these reports, the first of which was published in 1999. Professor Tony Vinson was the first professor of behavioural science at Newcastle University School of Medicine. He headed the Department of Social Work at UNSW. He led the New South Wales Department of Corrective Services during a period of intense prison reform. And he was a founding director of the New South Wales Bureau of Crime Statistics and Research. For the past 16 years, he has focused on researching disadvantaged communities in New South Wales and other states. The first study in New South Wales, An Unequal Life, found an exceedingly high concentration of child abuse and neglect in just a few postcode areas. And the report asks the important question, what can be done in partnership with the residents of those areas to improve their life opportunities and those of their children? The same question is asked in all three subsequent reports. In 2004, in 2007, and again in the latest research of disadvantage by postcode dropping off the edge in 2015. While the list of indicators for each study has increased and been updated, for example, to include internet access, the findings have been remarkably consistent. A small number of communities in New South Wales experience a high level of disadvantage and have done so for long periods of time, indicating that the disadvantages are well entrenched. The top most disadvantaged 11 postcodes in 2015 were on the list of the most disadvantaged postcodes in 2004 and 2007. And despite variation in the indicators, there is still a high degree of consistency with the 1999 data. The report tells us that those living in the 3% most disadvantaged postcodes in the state are 3.6 times as likely to have spent time in prison, more than three times as likely to be experiencing long-term unemployment, nearly three times more likely to have a low level of education and or to have suffered domestic violence, twice as likely to have a disability or significant mental health problem. The 2015 data shows that these consistently disadvantaged communities tend to have a high Aboriginal population and only three of the 17 are located in Sydney. In the first most disadvantaged band we have in alphabetical order, Brewarrina, Claymore, Lightning Ridge, Walgett, Wilcannia and Windale. Many of you have mercifully forgotten the Four Corners special on Claymore in September 2012. And those of you who have not heard of Windale, it's a suburb of Lake Macquarie in the Hunter. In the second band we have in alphabetical order, Burke, Barraville, Durriton, Iluka, Northern Rivers and Villawood which is the second Sydney suburb to appear. In the third band we have, in alphabetical order, Cabramatta, Canamble, Kempsey, Warrawong. I know that well, it's a suburb of Wollongong. Whereas Creek, near Tamworth. Yep. In his evidence last month to Social Issues Committee hearings on service coordination in communities with high social needs, Professor Vinson made a case for taking a community-based approach to addressing the multiple problems of high needs communities. This approach is based on evidence from his own studies in Victoria and also from overseas. He said, we make a case for looking at this difficulty in terms of not only the needs of individuals and families, which is the common way we talk about it, but also the overall community as an entity in its own right. Professor Vincent makes a case for the need for one agency, not necessarily government, but necessarily one trusted by the community to take the lead co quick. coordinating role, bringing the community together, building in community control and community resilience. Researchers are characterising the aim as being to develop collective efficacy, a belief among the community that they and their children can advance and aren't condemned to live permanently under those conditions. New South Wales and the federal government have started to address this problem, but Vincent's research and the Productivity Commission's work on deep and persistent disadvantage shows that we should do more. Government needs to focus its decision making on the well-being of people and communities by measuring what matters in people's lives and targeting services and resources to those areas that have been clearly demonstrated as being in the greatest need. The Honourable